So this video is on integrated um, one, chapter five. It's D-Day number two. And so for this one, we have a sequence, three, six, 12, 24, and we want to find the following. Um, first thing I would do is figure out what's happening. So it looks like we are multiplying by two. And since we're multiplying by two on question B, when it says is it arithmetic or geometric, it is going to be geometric because we are multiplying. And we are multiplying by two. Now on the next one, they want the fifth term. So this is the first, the second, the third, the fourth. So to find the fifth per term, I'm gonna think recursively and I'm gonna take the fourth term, which is 24, and I'm gonna times it by two. So I'm gonna take the fourth term, which is 24, times it by two, and I get 48. And that is the fifth term. Now for my recursive formula, um, it's reminding us to find our f of zero or f of, f of one. I'm fine with you giving me f of one is three. So if you wanna give me f of one is three, I'm fine with that. They did ask for f of zero. So if you are gonna give the f of zero in this case, I am multiplying by two. So going backwards, I am dividing by two, okay? So that's my f of zero. And then my actual recursive equation is f of n equal always f of n minus one. And then what are we doing? We are multiplying by two. So our recursive, I'm sorry, our explicit equation is f of n equal, and we want to start with our zero. And so our f of zero, oops, hold on. Our f of zero is three halves. So I'm gonna start with my three halves. And then what am I doing to three halves? I am multiplying it by two. And when I multiply by two over and over again, I have n in the exponent. And that's gonna be my explicit equation. Now, instead of three halves, I could have also given 1.5. Um, then it says find the 15th term. So to find the 15th term, I'm going to use my explicit equation. And I am going to put in a 15 as my exponent and I'm gonna work it out. So um, when I do that, let me do it with um, Sarah's hands. So if I'm gonna do that with Desmos, then I'm gonna be trying to put this in. Put my Okay, so I am going to be putting in three halves. Let me do it so we can see it. There, okay. Three halves um, times two raise the power 15. And we get 49,152. So 49,152. That's going to be our answer. On number two, um, we have a situation. We have 3,200 pencils each week. We are giving away 15% of the pencils to our friends. We want to write a recursive equation and an explicit equation. So what's gonna happen here is if we're giving away 15%, I'm gonna take 100% minus 15%. And that means every time we have 85% left. And so we want to know how many we always 
have, not how many we give. So this is going to be geometric. And our multiplier, we are multiplying by 0.85. That's what's going to happen. So my recursive equation, I'm going to start with my f of 0 because I know that my 0 is 3,200. That's what I'm starting with before I give any away. My recursive equation is going to be f of n is equal to f of n minus 1. And then what am I doing? I am multiplying by 0 0.85. That's my recursive equation. My explicit equation is going to be f of n. And I need to start with my 0. And so my 0 is 3,200. And what I'm doing is I'm multiplying this by 0 0.85 is 0 0.85 to the power n. That's our equation. On the next one says, if I don't use any pencils, how many will I have left at the end of six weeks? So I'm gonna use my recursive, my explicit equation, okay, explicit equation, um, this one right here, and I'm gonna be putting six in. So I'm gonna take 3,200, on 0 0.85 to the power six, okay? So let's see. So 3,200 times 0 0.85 raised to the power six. So we get 1,206.8. 8 if I round. So that's going to be um, 1,206.88. So about 1,207 pencils. On number three, matching. Okay, so we want to match each of these different representations. Some of them are a sequence. Okay. Um, some of them are a table, some of them are getting recursive equations, some of them are getting graphs, some of them are getting explicit equations. We have to match it up with the ones in the other column with A, B, C, D. So if I'm looking at number one, this one is arithmetic. Uh, my common difference is three. I'm adding three. And my First term is two. So let me see if I see anything like that. So in this case, um, let's see. So this is a two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this C is actually going to match with number one. So this is going to be C. Okay. Um, number two. So looking at this, I am minusing three, minusing three. So this one is going to also be arithmetic. But in this case, my common difference is a negative three. So I'm subtracting three. So if I look here at letter B, my f of one is two, and my recursive equation is saying that I'm minusing one, I mean minusing three. So this one is going to be letter B, those match. On number three, they're giving me a recursive equation. They're saying that our first term is six and that we're timesing by three. So then I'm going to get 18. And if I times by three, 54 and so on. And this one is geometric. And again, my common ratio is three. Okay. So this one has a common ratio of three. Uh, so I believe it's going to be this. Now, let me just double check. So if my f of 1 
is six and I am multiplying by three, then going backwards, my f of zero would be me dividing by three. And when I divide by three, I get a two. So there's my two times three to the power n. So this one here is going to go with D. Okay, on number four, um, this looks arithmetic because I am getting a linear situation. Oops. So um, I have my one is two. So this is one comma two. This one is three comma three. This one is five comma four. Um, seven comma five and so on. So um, this one again is arithmetic. So the first one is not arithmetic. This one here is arithmetic. And you see here is one is two, three is three, five is four. And so this one I am adding 0.5. So that's what's really happening here, okay? I'm going up one every two. So my change of y over change of x is up one over two, which is a 0.5. So those match. So that is going to be E goes with this one. Now that leaves us with this one being A, starting with nine multiplying by one third. Now, if I take nine times one third to the power one, that's gonna be nine times, a th times one third or nine thirds, which is three. So A is our situation. Okay, so again, um, we have C for number one, B for number two, D for letter number three, E for letter F, a letter four, number four, sorry, and A for letter number five. Okay, on um, this, we want to pick which is the explicit. So in this case, I am adding three each time. So um, it's not gonna be this one because that one's adding two. Not gonna be this one because that one's adding two. And they want explicit. So that's not explicit. So it's gonna be this one. And you might say, well, I don't know. That doesn't look like the proper equation. Well, this two is my first term. If I go one in front and I'm adding three going that way, to go backwards, I'm gonna minus three. And so if I do two minus three, I get a negative one. So I'm starting with negative one and adding three n. So B is the correct answer. Okay, on number five. So on this one, we want to match the explicit equation with the sequence. So this two is my zero term. So if I take two times negative three, one time, that gives me a negative six. This is my f of one. So it's not gonna be this. It's not gonna be this. It's not gonna be this. This one D is my answer. On number four, um, we're gonna be plotting this. Now I want to identify my slope and my y-intercept. Your slope is always the number with our x. So the number with our x is a, oops, negative two. And a negative two is really negative two over one. So I'm gonna go down two, right, always go to the right, right one. My y-intercept is the number that does not have an x. So my y-intercept's three. So I'm gonna start on my y-intercept of three and I'm gonna go down to right one, down to right one. And that's gonna be my line. So 
There you go. So there's our line. It's just going to adjust a little bit. Okay, on number seven, we want to find a mistake here, and then we want to solve it properly. So looking at this, um, what I would do is distribute my negative here, which would give me a four minus two x. A negative times a negative is a positive x equal two x. So now let me take a peek here, oops, and see if that is the same. And it is not because here I have a plus and here I have a minus. So the problem, the part that was wrong is step one. So now let me properly solve this equation. So I'm going to get 2 plus x equals 2x. I'm going to minus x from both sides. I get 2 is equal to x. So that is my answer. x is 2. Okay, on number 8, uh, we want the one that's a solution. So let me just plot these. 0 comma negative 3 is here. That's not on the line, so that's a no. 2 comma 0 is here. That's not on my line because it has to be on my line if it's a solution. 2 comma 2 would be here. Well, that's not on my line. And my last one, negative 3 comma 0. So that one works. That is our solution. Everything on the line is a solution, but that's the only one of our choices here that works. Okay, 9, we're reflected over the x axis. This is the x axis. So I'm going to reflect it across this. So if I'm going to reflect it across this, um, I'm going to have the shape exactly the same distance from that line. And so that's what I should end up getting. On number 10, I am going to raise everything here to the power two. So um, my two squared is going to be a four. My x to the third, raise the power two, power to power, I multiply, I get a six. I have eight x to the fourth. So now when I'm looking at the four and the eight, four divided by eight is a one half. So I'm going to have a one on top and a two on bottom. Now, I don't really need the one if I have other things on top. So let's see if I need, I'm gonna take it off for a second. Now I'm looking at my X's. I have X to the sixth and X to the fourth. So I have six X's on top, four X's on bottom. I can cancel four from top and bottom and I'm left with two on the top. And that's my answer. And this one is gonna be an area model. So I'm gonna have an X and a negative two, a two X and a positive five, and then I'm gonna multiply. So I get a two X squared when I take two X times X. Two X times a negative two is a negative four X. Five times X is a five X. And five times a negative two is a negative 10. So I get two X squared plus X minus 10. And that's your answer. And that's the end of this video.